So tonight I wanted to discuss um, Shai Zhu's uh, only record for DHR, and that is Shai Zhu versus Shai Zor. Assuming I'm pronouncing that correctly, I'm probably not, but at this point I've mispronounced so many things from so many records, I don't really care. Um, this record was, of course, it was a co-release. It was also licensed to Grand Royal because uh, the guys in the Beastie Boys were totally loving everything Alec Empire and DHR were doing at this point. So that was a huge step up here, which is amazing because otherwise a record like this is just too wild and too hard and, and fast to really reach a wider audience. But thanks to Grand Royal, at least it got it over in the States and it did help kind of like break his career that much more. And I don't know if you know this or not, but David Hammer, as in Shizu here, he died of uh, unknown circumstances back, I believe, in 2011. They broke the news via Facebook, I think, in June, mid-June 2011. And it's suspected that it was an overdose, but nobody really knows. And that was a number of years ago. So David Hammer is uh, long gone by the point I'm discussing this. But I will say, in a way, that's kind of a testament to the strength of the music, too, with songs like Punk's and Brain Dead, and Emptiness, Sexual High, I mean, Blondo. This record is incredibly hard. It's punishing, but at times it's really fun and really melodic and really catchy and sort of clean sounding. And then, like, again, with songs like Punk's, it just kind of dives back in and starts to, like, put the hammer down and kick your ass all over again, which is a lot of fun because that's what I found with a lot of DHR stuff is you can't really sort of... There's no medium ground. It's just... It's either... One minute it's all of one thing and the next it's all of something else. And then occasionally it'll try something else yet again, go down a third new avenue, and then it'll come back to the crazier shit it was doing earlier and then the mid-paced crazier shit it did after that. So the records are kind of all over the place and this record is certainly no exception, but I will say there was a greater sense of fun on this album. In a lot of ways I could relate this to Bomb 20's Field Manual. This record has a, 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 the right sense of humor. It, it, it's got like the, the right amount of heart in the right place, whereas the music is taken very seriously. At the same time, it's incredibly fun and playful, and it's able to poke fun at itself from time to time. And it shows how talented Hammer was, but his love of distorted breakbeats was always going to sort of hamper his ability to break into anything bigger and perhaps make more serious amounts of money. And... I suppose none of that matters now anyways, because unfortunately, like I said earlier, he has passed on back in 2011. But this record's great. I love the artwork. I love how bright it is. I love how colorful. And in a sense, the colors, the color scheme chosen for this album sort of complement the music completely, because whereas the color scheme is sort of bright and kind of crazy, it's also really fun and inviting. And if you like this kind of music, you're not going to have a problem with how accurate that is, because like I said, on one hand, it's crazy. On the other hand, it's not, and then it goes back to being crazy, and then sort of crazy, and then completely crazy, and then not crazy. And that's kind of DHR in a nutshell, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. But yeah, so this record was released way back when. This was released during sort of like, this is, he was part of like the original crew of DHR DHR artists who were releasing sort of the, the classic period of DHR's material as a whole at this point. This came out back in 97, right in the middle of the fucking Atari Teenage Riot tornado. And this record fits right in, even though I will say I like the ATR way more. And, you know, it's because it's the Atari Teenage Riot and I fucking love them. This record's great. It is a lot of fun, but it is hard to take because it is kind of all over the place and it does stay hard and fast for the most part, or if not fast, it stays definitely hard. And so for that reason and that reason alone, that's going to kneecap this record's ability to reach more people. But I don't think anybody cares because this record came out fucking 25, 26 years ago and it's the whole scene is kind of said and done with now. All right, I'm going to go. So thank you so much for sitting with me while I discussed a Shizu versus Shizor, which I probably mispronounced. And this was released on DHR back in 90, 1997. Like always, if you like this review, don't forget to do something nice for somebody, and I will see you guys soon. Have a good night. I just wanted to say thank you for making it through the entire video. I really appreciate it. And I'm going to remind everyone one more time, even though I've probably already done this in the video that you just watched, to please click the like button as well as the subscribe button because it helps this channel grow. And thank you for hitting like and subscribe. And we will see you guys really soon.